What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodernation. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm here with the Bubble Wall PC, which many of you have probably seen before on Instagram and other social media. I am doing a build work log on this PC. You've seen many of my other videos before where I've put together complete build guides on how to build some of the mods on my channel. But this one I wanted to do a little bit more behind the scenes. So there's many different decisions that go into creating a mod. Now you guys see the final product on how I built it and put it all together, but you don't see the parts where I make changes, I mess up, things don't work out the way that I want them to, and then I go a completely different direction with it. Now do keep in mind that I did give myself a deadline. Now I was making this mod exclusively for the San Diego Maker Fair. So I had about maybe three weeks to a month to get it done. There were a lot of last minute changes, there was frustration, I had leaks, I had uh, adhesive that wasn't holding the way that it should, and so I had to make changes between, do I use the uh, weld on, do I use super glue, do I use hot glue, um, do I hold this thing together with duct tape, right? So I had many different uh, decisions, and that's just adhesives. Then it was like, okay, well, how am I gonna mount all the pumps underneath? Okay, what are they gonna be powered by? Fan controller, okay, how am I gonna mount the fan controller? Um, is it gonna be sticking out the back? So there's many different uh, things that I had to make changes about on the fly. Let me know if this is the type of content that you like to see by giving this video a like and leaving a comment below. I'm gonna make an entire series out of this, so uh, expect more videos on the way. By the way, this is the first prototype in a series of what I believe is gonna be many iterations of this mod. Right now, this is just a proof of concept. I wanted the idea of getting a bubble wall inside of a computer first. So there will be a version two of this mod um, that probably has a better pumping system. And if you guys are wondering, yeah, this one over here, it already leaked. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Going the oh, false start. Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning. Uh, so this is day one of my vlog. I'm gonna start uh, showing you guys how I'm gonna be constructing this mod. I don't think I'm gonna start. I don't think I'm gonna tell you yet exactly what it is. I don't want to give it away too soon, but you can kind of see the build process and sort of maybe even figure it out before I'm done. Uh, so I got a couple things I'm gonna do today. So I've got the NZXT S340 case. And I'm gonna take the side panel off. I'm gonna remove the window on it. It's a polycarbonate window. Uh, don't like the polycarbonate. Instead, I'm gonna be replacing it with acrylic. I'm gonna be doing it the same way that I did with the Snowblind, that one, the Snowblind system behind me, or the LCD side panel mod, as many of you know it is. Uh, that's a Thermaltake Core V31, and I took the same polycarbonate window out of that one and replaced it with acrylic. Now when I do that, I have these tabs that I need to fold up, and I'm gonna fold it, fold the tabs up, pull the window out, then I need to cut the tabs off. I'm gonna be doing that probably with a Dremel and sanding it down. It's not actually a Dremel, it's a Black & Decker rotary, but all rotary tools are known as Dremel. And train's going by. All right, I also received two packages, so we're gonna go open those packages and see what I've got. Okay, so we've got the window off, and as you can see from the back of this window, uh, we've got some tabs here along the sides. So we're gonna go ahead and just bend those up and then pull the window out. You know what, actually this might be easier with a flathead screwdriver. Now, we we'll try to get these up without scratching the paint. I don't know why companies use polycarbonate to begin with. I mean, this stuff scratches so easily. There you go. Start with a corner. Just pull it up. There you go. That's your window. No, that's me. So. 
All right, so now the next part is gonna be, we need to break these little tabs off. Um, I think I have just the solution. All right, so um, I've got some wire cutters here. Uh, hopefully these will be good enough to take that mess off. Looks like I was not recording in focus and I refocused it and uh, now we're good. Maybe we could try from this angle. Let's see here. See if we can get a shot of it flying off here. There you go. No, it didn't fly off this time. But see, now we're left with this little nub here. It's not gonna let the window lay flat, so we're gonna have to sand that down. No, I mean, you could make noise in the back. Just don't talk, don't say your address or anything. It's not Melrose Drive, it's Melrose Place. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna make up a fake address, at least try to be a little bit factually correct about it. I live in Beverly Hills. Yes, I've made it. All right, so for this next portion, I'm gonna be hand filing uh, with this giant metal file. This part's gonna take a while, so if you guys wanna just fast forward through this part, that's cool, or I'll do it for you. Actually, on second thought, I think maybe I'm gonna use my Black & Decker rotary tool and use the cutting wheel and just kind of cut some of these off instead of filing it. I think it's gonna be a lot easier. The problem that I run into with filing is that I could be scratching the paint on the inside and that's gonna be an issue. Uh, because I don't want to have to take the time to repaint the inside. So I think I'm going to let the rotary tool do the work. That's a part of the process. You think that I'm going to start using the file and maybe I switch halfway with the rotary tool. And you guys don't see that um, in the regular videos. You see the finalized product. A little behind the scenes action for you there. All right, we're back. Um, so I got my rotary tool, uh, Dremel 326 fiberglass reinforced cutting wheel. Uh, make sure you got your safety goggles on. All right, let's do this. We're gonna flip this bad boy around. So that way the grinding portion is on the outside. And what that allows me to do is I can literally push the blade down into the metal. So I can push it down like this and it will start to just grind it and flatten it. All right, so that's three of them. I'm gonna finish off the rest of these and I'll come right back. All right, so as you can see, the edges are sanded off pretty well. Let's see, focus there. You can see where the tabs used to be. There's just kind of a little metal. Okay, so that aspect is done. Now we just need to cut the acrylic for the window. All right, so I tried to wipe off some of the dust with this uh, microfiber cloth. Now we need to measure out the window. It looks like here it's about maybe 12 and a half. And here it's about 12. Thinking maybe an extra inch would be good. Actually, we might want to do 13. So it's 12 over here. If I give myself an extra inch, that's 13. So that's a half inch on each side. I'd say 13 by 13 and a half. Get my pencil here. So that's about 13 and a half right there. And then we drop it 13, probably about here. Problem is that I've cut from a previous piece so this edge is not even. I'm gonna have to even out this edge over here to make it a solid uh, 13 and a half. One of the things you want to remember when you're cutting pieces is you don't want to cut right on the line. You want to cut a little bit more because these aren't exact tools and they're going to take a little bit more material off. So if you start on the outside, even if you have too much, when you finish, you can always grind it down. It's okay if it's not precise because uh, there's going to be some overlap on the inside of the case. We just need to fill the window.
Okay, so for those of you that are wondering what this stuff is that's coming off, when the blade is spinning, it gets really hot. And what can happen is the cover, this brown cover that goes over the acrylic, it will actually start to gum up. It just, it melts it and it starts to gum up into this stuff. It starts out soft, but as soon as it cools down, it becomes this hardened plastic again. So it's not a problem. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of file this down a little bit and make sure it's uh, nice and even. All right, now that the acrylic portion is taken care of for the most part, I'm gonna go shake all this out. I need to get rid of this. Shake it out in the trash. All right, so we got the window cut out and now I'm gonna take a break from that and look at the packages that just came in today. All right, we got package number one. This is from McMaster Car. Okay, first thing from McMaster Car, we got these, uh, what are they called? Plastic barb tube fittings. They're quarter inch to one eighth inch. Maybe you could see them in there, kind of tiny. And we got some tubing. Uh, we've got, we got 50 feet of tubing, holy moly. That's a lot of tube. We're gonna run some pipe in here. <laughs> All right, that's number one. This is number two. Um, this is from China. Uh, you can see that it's already been examined by US Customs and Border Protection. Bureau is keeping us safe. So, go ahead and open this up. All right. So we've got these little motor pumps, little actuator pumps. Uh, there should be about 12 or 13 of them. Looks like there are 12 of them. I need to get to testing these to make sure that they work. All right, so to test it out, I'm gonna construct this little battery pack with these uh, red and black leads, and we're just gonna go through and test each one individually. These pumps really can't quite see here, but they run on 12 volts. They should operate at a minimum of three volts. These are the kinds of pumps that you have in like the CPAP machines, uh, blood pressure monitors, um, what else? Uh, Keurigs use these type of air pumps. So we'll go ahead and try these out. Okay, so we only need about six double A's. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. get my voltmeter out here. Okay, it's reading 9.80. Okay, so it looks like there's a pink dot on there and I think the pink dot means positive. Sounds like a duck call. So we're just gonna test these individually one by one, make sure. They are kind of loud. I'm gonna have to figure out some way that I can silence them. Okay, well, that one's making a different noise. All right, I've got my precision screwdriver set here. We're gonna go ahead and take this guy apart. It's got three Phillips screws. Okay, wow. Those are, uh, those are pretty long screws. Whoa. Okay, so there's the inside. And then we've got this kind of membrane sort of deal. Can't really see, but they're kind of attached, so I can't take it out. Well, that's it. I mean, I, there are really no other screws to take apart, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together. I'll go ahead and give you guys a test to show you how this works. See, they kind of actuate. They kind of, uh, they kind of travel in and out at high frequency. This causes a pressure, buildup of air pressure which makes the pump work. Um, we're gonna conduct a little test here just to make sure that things are working. So I'm gonna take about a foot of tubing, take my scissors and cut. This is 12 inches of tubing right here. Make any jokes you want. We'll take one of the pumps. We'll take this one. Go ahead.
ahead and connect it. It fits on there pretty snug, which is good. Okay, back with my water. Move the water up here. We'll open up our bag of tips. Get out of the way. Get the scissors. Okay, so here's one of the tips. So we've got two ends here. We've got a 1 8 inch end on this side and a quarter inch on this side. That's intentional and you'll see why later in this project. Go ahead and connect the tip. Okay, so now we've got our assembly, which is pump, tube, and tip. So we're gonna submerge the tip in the water. I think some of you are now getting the idea of what I'm about to do. All right, let's see if it works. All right, looks like it's working great. All right, so now we know that the, not only does the pump work, but it is pumping air quite well. All right, well, that test was successful. The only thing now that I'm waiting on are the little check valves. The check valves are gonna go in the middle of the tubing. What that's gonna do is that's gonna prevent any water over here from running back into the pump because we don't want any water getting back into the pump. Hey, what's going on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> See, we have a guest commentator. All right, guys, so initial tests looked great. So I'm gonna wait till the check valves arrive before I continue working with the pumps and the tubes. All right, so things are looking good so far. So we're gonna switch gears and look at the square tubes that I bought. All right, so we got the tubing here, these are it, they're foot long square tubes. These are what I'm gonna be using for the case mod. Um, here's a shorter piece, kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, it's semi-transparent acrylic, square shaped. What I'm gonna be doing is using this uh, acrylic. This acrylic isn't blue, it's just covered in blue. It's actually clear acrylic. Um, I'm gonna be making a base on the bottom for this and then drilling a hole through the base so that we can put the barbs through. And we want it to be watertight. Might take a couple tries with some acrylic melding, uh, I forget what it's called. This stuff for acrylics um, that I'm gonna be using to act as an adhesive and uh, then water testing it to make sure it's watertight and the areas that aren't watertight, just filling it in with some super glue. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya!